Hello guys, uh, my name is Nikolai Yusupov. In this video, I'd like to show you how to perform uh, ST segment uh, deviation training, right? Mm -hmm. So for you to perform the ST segment deviation tra uh, uh, trending on this monitor, you first need to perform a standard 12 lead EKG. So I have my partner, he's sitting uh, right now on the stretcher. He has a 12 lead connected. We have not run a, a standard 12 lead. So we're gonna do the, the standard 12 lead. And once the monitor acquires the standard 12 lead, it's gonna look right uh, on the lead that has the most uh, deviation on the ST segment. So I'll show you right how this looks uh, on the actual um, manual, right? So here I have the manual from the LifePack 15 and you see right STJ, right? So it shows you this uh, J point and it's actually it's gonna measure, right? Uh, is it, it's gonna measure either up or down and in the lead that's the most displaced. And why you say, well, what's the purpose of doing this? The purpose of doing this is that, let's say you have somebody who's having chest pain and they're having, let's say right now, uh, you may not see active uh, STEMI, right? It's important to do serial 12 leads. So maybe during transport, uh, the monitor picks up, right? That there is elevations or patient got treatment. Let's say they got thrombolytics, right? Uh, or they got a stent placed and you wanna see resolution of the ST segment. So usually that's what we monitor and this uh, device will obtain basically automatically every 30 seconds, it will look right at all the leads and what it's gonna do is gonna measure uh, and look for anything that's one millimeter or 0 0.1 millivolts more up or down, right? Uh, in deviation that persists for more than 2.5 minutes. So if you have a uh, one millimeter uh, deviation up or down or elevation of depression you should say for more than 2.5 minutes it will essentially print an, an additional 12 lead to inform you that there's been a change so how would we even get to this mode I'll show you right now right so the first step that you're going to do is this you're gonna place the patient on the uh, on your monitor right and you're gonna run your regular three lead right so we run your three lead right so you got your uh, initial rhythm right and then you're gonna go into the 12 lead mode, right? So you're gonna press 12 lead, right? You're gonna select the patient's age, right? So I'll put his age and then male or female. That's essentially why you put age is for the algorithm uh, that the LifePack 15 has pre-built. So we'll do that. And um, you basically tell your patient, please stay still, do not move. And it's gonna acquire the baseline 12 lead, right? And it's gonna print it out. Once the baseline 12 lead is printed out, everything is gonna be based on this 12 lead, right? So I don't expect any you know, pathology with him, right? I'm not expecting any ST segment deviation up or down, right? Uh, but we need the initial 12 lead, right? Uh, for us to start the training. So the 12 lead comes out and you see, right? On this 12 lead, the moment it's, it prints out, right? You see this STJ level, right? So right now it's gonna look at these leads. So the, the, the one that will probably pick up from here is probably V2 because it's 0.79 millimeters, right? So we'll see what automatically is gonna put. So once I have the baseline 12 lead, right? And uh, I assessed it, right? The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my selector wheel, right? I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna say waveform and I'm gonna say trend. So I'm gonna scroll down until I see trend, press this in, right? And uh, what I wanna trend is I wanna trend ST, right? So you see at the bottom, I'm gonna select ST, that stands for ST segment. And then you see how it, it's automatically, right? The scale's automatic and it chose D2 and I already knew it was gonna choose D2 because based on this uh, readout, right? V2 had the most deviation here, right? So it's gonna be uh, using it. But if you didn't want to, uh, you know, employ the automatic response, right? You could have select any other lead. So let's say you saw elevations in uh, lead uh, three, right? That were the, the biggest, or you were concerned about inferior wall MI, you could select, right, the appropriate leads, uh, you know, up, going up and down, right? I'm gonna leave it in V2 just to show you, right? So once we select this, right? And we select the, 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 the trend, right? I'm gonna click home, right? And you see, right? Uh, we have a couple of things that are showing here. So here it shows you which uh, lead it's monitoring, right? Let me see it will focus better, right? So it shows you that it's monitoring V2 for ST segment deviation, right? And obviously there is nothing that occurred right now, right? You see these dashes uh, because there was no deviation from the baseline. And now I'm gonna show you on this uh, uh, LifePack 15, 
right this is essentially from the manual so how would look if there was in case any differences right so it will every 30 seconds right it will essentially uh, uh, read the 12 lead. it reads all the 12 leads and it looks uh, right where there's the biggest deviation so here we said it's looking at, at lead uh, v2 on this particular one it was looking at lead 2 not v2 but lead 2 in this particular one and you see right so uh, figure one corresponds to uh, increase and decrease in right sd uh, uh segment right uh, the j point right here this is what it corresponds to the next thing is number two is the lead that it's monitoring so he, on this diagram right in this it's looking at lead two for our patients we are monitoring his v2 right and then what is three and four so three and four is essentially change right three is change in his sd segment deviation and four is his current sd segment uh right that he has so here right you see his current is 0.8 and why is it 0.8 is because from v2 right this is what it what it had right at 0.79 millimeters so v2 was 0.79 you see here see if it'll focus better I hope uh, it will pick this up, but we see it's 0.8, right? And there's no deviation, so it's uh, the next box is, is so it's 0.8 current and 0, 0 for the next one. And you see, right, uh, these bars. So every 30 seconds that pass by, it's basically clicking away. It's sound, it's it's basically assessing, right, what's happening to his uh, uh, ST segment, right? Is it up or down? And like I said, it will automatically print the strip. Now, uh, a couple of things that's very important to explain to you why is this important. Right, so here there's a there was an article uh, called "The Evolution of Electrocardiographic Changes in ST Segment Elevation." Somebody who's having an MI, and here, right, you see a good diagram, right, the evolution of a STEMI, right. So you see in the beginning, right, uh, at zero to twelve minutes, you have these elevated T waves. We call them call them hyperacute T waves, and as the time goes by, right, they become more hyperacute until twenty four minutes. You have essentially this is the j point you have j point elevation right STEMI and then up to right uh an hours right and weeks you have in uh you have q wave formation right uh so q waves usually indicate that it's some time has passed but however this article also said in some patients q waves may appear within one hour so right, just because you have q wave uh, uh does not mean it's been long it might have been uh, an hour and so you still want to be cognizant that the patient uh, is having a STEMI. So here they'll just show you a normal variant and how it will progress, right? Early on, hyper-QT wave, right? Hyper-QT wave. And then we see, right, this giant R wave. This is ST segment elevation. We call it STEMI, right? This is the morphology. And here we see, right, the Q wave formation, right? And, uh, uh, you know, so this is what we're essentially monitoring for, right, during transport. And this ST segment uh, a trend allows us to do now i want to show you a couple of uh you know ekgs that i essentially had from my call where you may have one morphology and then uh, it will completely change right so i had this patient he was having a STEMI right when we picked him up and uh i want to show you he went from having an anterior wall of my right to having an inferior wall of my uh which usually it's very rare to see right uh so um let me focus right so this was the initial 12 lead that we obtained on this guy and you see right he if you look at these v leads right the the ones that are specially pronounced right we see that he has v3 v4 four millimeter elevations right v3 v4 so if we look and here we would say right well, this he's having anterior STEMI, right so I placed them, uh, right, and I'm doing serial 12 leads, I'm placed them on uh, STJ monitoring, right, the trending, right, so we're doing the serial 12 leads, right, and uh, there is no real change, right, same morphology, right, again, right, anterior STEMI, anterior STEMI, right, and then uh, right before we placed them on the cath lab, right, what happens here, right, so he reverts to having uh, an inferior wall STEMI, right? You see elevations two, three, right? Uh, uh, right here, right? An AVF, almost five, six millimeter elevations. So this is very important to inform the physician. I actually asked this uh, cardiologist, he said, it's possible the artery can fracture distally, right? A uh, fractured plaque. And you may see these types of changes, right? Occurring. But if I was not on on, uh, on a trending mode and I printed uh, three EKGs, I would have never known that this patient transitioned from the anterior 
stemmy, right? That you see here, right? Uh, V3, V4, right? Elevations right here to this. And then <clears throat> something else is very important to know on these monitors, right? You notice V3 is missing, right? So V3 did not record for some unknown reason. And uh, we we thought, right, uh, it's just maybe when you clean these uh, electrodes, right? Uh, these cables, right, that connect at the points uh, with, uh, you know, like alcohol based uh, wipes or maybe bleach wipes and that's what's causing this it's not i had this patients connected to my toilet the entire time i never t took this off so there's there's no disconnecting of leads and the v3 just stopped working right so if v3 is not showing you're essentially missing a diagnostic toilet you have no interpretation that's why it's missing the interpretation and you're missing uh one of the leads here so uh this may also happen to you right uh so uh be cognizant of that but the point of all this is that we're tr what are we trending for? We're trending for the deviations, right? Is it resolving? Is it getting worse? So if ST segment is trending down, it's probably getting better. Maybe patient got treatment. If it's going up, patient is getting worse. And then at the very and the, and the other one, right? You may go from uh, completely right uh, one morphology like anterior STEMI, right, that you see here, to an inferior STEMI, all right uh, during the same transport, and you would not have picked this up had it not been uh, monitoring your deviation, right? And print out a different strip. So <clears throat> so when you want to use it, right? When you're performing your STEMI transfers, especially patients post cardiac arrest STEMIs, anybody who you suspect ACS, acute coronary syndromes, they say they have chest pain, right? Maybe not a STEMI yet. Maybe they have hyperacute T waves, right? Like I showed you here, right? On this diagram, right? So you may be early on in the in the cycle, they may have T wave inversions. So you place them here and every 30, 30 seconds, right? It will essentially take a snapshot right of the 12 lead and will monitor the, the lead that has the most deviation up or down and then if there is uh as we said right one millimeter deviation for 2.5 minutes it will print another 12 lead uh to alert you right there is a problem so just to show you how uh, uh how we got here right uh you essentially render a 12 lead then you use your uh wheel right to select right the waveform and you're going to click trend right and you're going to select the source is going to be st and it'll automatically select the lead for you that has the most deviation right so this is how we're going to perform this procedure